Now this evening I want to continue on how to turn hopeless situations around. Nambikaitra Sulnalegala Yapri Nam Nambika Ulla Sulnalegalaga Thirupla Menba the Kurit Todandan Pesa Virimbagrain Sendra Varatle Nam in a partum Esaya Napati Munda the Adigar Mirvati Ainda the Vasanum Yirvati Ara the Vasanum Nam Vasito Adilinde Nam Urmukyamana Karyate Partum in a Yepudi Nam Jebicum Vale. Vadakadi nam jebi pade nalam in bade kurita nam parto. I taught on how you can plead your case, much like a lawyer pleads his case, on the basis of Isaiah chapter 43 and verses 25 and 26. Now I wanted to mark those scriptures down because the Bible encourages us to plead our case that we may be justified. Nam nidi mangal agum badike, vilangum badike. Namudia Kariate, Devana Kumunbaga, Sola Vendum in Bade, Katatame, Namai Pati Ketkum or a Kari Maga, Rikaranam. Somebody just wrote it for the sake of writing it, it's one thing. But if you believe this is God Almighty making or creating an invitation specifically for you to come before Him and to plead your case to show why you need this, then the Bible tells us God Almighty will hear you out. He'll give you a fair hearing. Can I have an Amen, please? It's exciting because it sets prayer in a different realm altogether. That means I can come before God and say, God, I need this. Why do I need it? Because this and this and this and this has to happen. And that will be what God Almighty will grant me. And that is something we've been doing for the last couple of weeks here. What I need... He needs. Because what he needs, I need. So when we stand before God and we plead our case before God and say, God, I need this. For this. And for this. And for this. It's just a matter of time before he starts providing what we need. Why? Because we are pleading our case before God. That we may be found righteous. It's amazing because most people don't do it. Instead, they talk the problem to God. God doesn't want to hear the problem. He wants to know why you need the solution to what you're asking. Why do you need it? Do you know the answer for it? Constantly, people are unaware of the necessity of knowing exactly what they require in life. So because they don't know what they require, they never get what they want. But you look at a man who knows what he wants, he'll get it. The world will call him a go-getter. It doesn't matter. He's already got what he wanted. The world will give you different types. Who's bothered? The world doesn't appreciate anybody. The world doesn't appreciate anybody. Even the most honest man is not appreciated. But then does it mean you don't be honest? No, you continue to just keep doing what God called you to do. Period. But when you come and stand before God, if there's a need in your life, you've got to justify your asking for what you want. It happens even in companies. You go up to your boss and put a request for something. He wants to know why exactly you want it. Not because he doesn't know you require it. But he wants to know whether you will wisely use what you want. Or you are asking for. The same with God. Don't so spiritualize your spiritual life. That you think it's going to be that easy. Getting things from God. No, he wants to know whether you want what you want. And you know why you want it. Look at Jesus. Everybody knew blind Bartimaeus was blind. It was so obvious. Don't tell me Jesus couldn't see. But you find Jesus looking at blind Bartimaeus and asking him, what do you want? He said, my sight. He said, you got it. We read that portion of scripture so many times and yet we don't know what we want. Now I told you this last week. There are two things why sometimes people don't get. Prayers answered. Number one, 
I'm going to repeat it before I move on. Because they never turn their face to the wall and see the face of God. Because in seeing the face of God, you have the favor of God in your life. Suvar puramage tangalde mugatay tirupamel. Yepudyo katter seivar yepudyo naan samali pain endre samali padile avar galiri kharag. Now please understand that word samali pad is not there in the Bible. I'll somehow manage the problem. You're not called to manage your problem. You're called to cast your burden upon the Lord. And He will sustain thee. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. Can I have an Amen please? We are having people are managing a lot of things they are not called to manage. So what happens is people never take time to spend time with God. And I'll tell you this and please get it right. If I teach you some other shortcut, I'll be cheating you. Because there is no shortcut in the kingdom of God. I wish there were. I would have taken off. You won't be finding me here this evening. Sure, you'll be highly disappointed coming here to find me. I won't be here. I would have taken off. Because I found the easy way out. But there's no easy way. You got to be found faithful. You got to be found in your in your place where God has placed you day in and day out. Then He will choose to do something with your life. Sometimes it looks like you're plodding. Never mind, just keep plodding. Because then ultimately a time comes when He says, "Payday is on." That's what people don't understand. When payday comes, that's when they brighten up. Their eyes keep looking at you. They are wondering, how on earth is the man getting things done? But I'll tell you how it happens. Because when everything else was contrary, the man was found in his place doing what God asked him to do. He was not bothered whether the spotlight was on him or not. He was not bothered whether people were looking at him or checking him out. He just kept doing, 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 doing what God called him to do. That's why it's a tragedy when people try to judge you. Because they don't understand if you're a called man and you're chosen and anointed of God and you've been plodding all these years. Very hard for you to suddenly stop plodding. You'll just keep trudging every day. Inch by inch. Anything is a cinch. You'll keep moving on. Every day you'll keep moving on, moving on, moving on, pressing on. Going forward. Why? Because that's what God called us to do. But you've got to take time to turn your face to the wall. Because it is something that costs something to do it. It's, it's a price you have to pay. It's not easy. Just imagine if we, we give so much of respect to Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. Imagine if Isaiah himself stood and prophesied something to you. Then you have to overcome that prophecy and turn your face towards the wall. Not a joke. Isaiah in person is standing and saying in a few hours time you are going to die. And then you say no. Let me turn to a God who is bigger than Isaiah. It takes guts. It takes a lot of effort. It's painful. Because... Over and over again, you will start hearing his voice ringing in your ears. Set your house in order. Set your house in order. Set your house in order. Not going to be easy. You, most of us think it was easy. Because we just read the incident just like that and we just skip and go through. And then we start saying, well, you don't know about my problem. No, you better know what others have gone through earlier. It was as tough for them as in their time like it is in our days. Don't go by that song. One day at a time, Lord Jesus. That's a fake song. Thank God for the first part. The latter half I don't agree with. It's worse now than then. Who told you that? Who told you that? Today one man is going to be hanged. The whole nation is crying foul. But in Christ's time, every now and then there were crucifixions taking place. Murderers were there in Christ's time. Adulterers were there in Christ's time. Robbers were there in Christ's time. They robbed people. They beat them bad. Otherwise, we won't have the story of the Good Samaritan. 
what are you talking about? Some people sing songs, they don't even know what they're blabbering. They give us a wrong impression that it's more now. No, in every generation, there is the same stress, the same pressure, the same thing that people have to face. That's why we need a God who never changes, my friends. He's unchanging. He'll stand with us. He'll put us over in life. He's our glory and the lifter up of our head. The same way he was the glory and the lifter up of the heads of the people of the early church. We need him all the time. Number two. The second reason. Most often, prayers are not intense enough. Ukka thode nam jebi padhi kadayad. Yerenda avad kariyam. Udal kariyam, suvar puramaga nam kattare. Namudya mugatte itirupi, kattare mugatte par padhi kadayad. Yerenda avade, ukka maga nam jebi padhi kadayad. Our prayers are not intense enough. Come with me to the book of James, please. James chapter 5. We are going to read a couple of scriptures from verses 16 onwards. Yaakob, I am the Adhikaram, Padinara, the Vasnathin, Kadesi Bagatil, and the Namparka Pograman, and the Vasnathi Vasit, the Namparko. Ningal Sostamadayam Padike, Ungal Kutrangal, Uruver Kuru, Arika, Uruver Kaga, Uruver Jabam Bandangal. Now, the latter half of the verse is what we are going to be dealing with. Nidiman Sayam, Ukamana Vendel Migabum. Intensity in prayer is important. When you focus on what you want and you're intense enough when you pray to pray a word-based prayer and to hold on to what you require, you will find your prayer heard and answered. Nidiman Sayam Ukamana Vendel Migamam Belanulada Yirkare. Sometimes, even for the most mundane of things, you will see intensity in prayer will get the problem solved. Years ago, I was listening to a sister who was going through a very, very tough time in her life. And there was this problem that had copyright and so many other things were going on. And one day she was so disgusted, so tired, so depressed, just sitting. And then all of a sudden she looked and she found a stream of ants going through her house. That was the last straw. Under normal circumstances, ants passing through her house wouldn't have made her, you know, become so disgusted. But that day, something snapped in her. She just looked and said, God, I don't want to see this thing in my house any longer. It's either me or the ants. Can I have an amen? It's either me or the ants. I've had enough. And she just went to sleep. She was so disgusted. She had a bad, raw deal in life. The next day she got up. The house is clean of ants. No ants. No ants. It may not be much of a testimony to you and me, but it was to her. And I'll tell you, when there's a lot of mess going on, ants passing through your house will be a, the last straw for some people. Sometimes it's rats. Sometimes it's mosquitoes. They have an army. It's you got to decide what you want. You got to be intense about what your prayer is all about. Every day you get up in the morning and mosquitoes are disturbing. It's either mosquitoes or you before the Lord. Whom does God want? You're ready. I'm ready to get up, Lord. But these mosquitoes, he'll decide. I'll, I'll have my son. Intense... Intensity in prayer matters. We think it is not that required. We think, well, God is so spiritual, He won't remove that to do this. No, He will. Because He didn't tell the mosquitoes, come early in the morning and seek me out. You will find me. 
I wisdom say, mosquitoes come. No, he, he said, they that seek me early shall find me. And he was talking to you and me. There must be an intensity in our heart. We must know what matters in the sight of God. Does prosperity matter in the sight of God or poverty? Does walking in good health matter in the sight of God or living a sick life? What matters? Does God want a whiner in the kingdom or a praiser in the kingdom? You got to have intensity about what you want. Sometimes people look at me and say, you're very intense on certain topics. I have to be very, very intense. <laughs> because unless I'm intense, I can't make it. Sometimes I may sound very intense. You may not like me at that time. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I have to set the trend about what God wants me to do in my life first before I can stand and tell others be intense. Look at this place. The prayer of a righteous man. What prayer? The fervent prayer of a righteous man. Not just an ordinary casual prayer. Nidiman Sayyam Ukamana Jabba. அப்படி என்றால் ஊக்கமான ஜபத்தை ஜெபிக்கும் மனிதர்கள் அவர்களுடைய ஜபத்தை கர்த்தர் கேட்கிறார் பதில் கொடுக்கிறார் அதற்கு ஒரு உதாரணமும் அங்கே இருக்கிறது அந்த உதாரணத்தை பார்த்து இன்னொரு உதாரணத்தையும் நான் சொல்ல விரும்புகிறேன் நீதிமான் செய்யும் ஊக்கமான வேண்டுதல் அந்த வார்த்தையை குறித்துக் கொள்ளுங்கள் ஊக்கமான வேண்டுதல் மிகவும் it availeth much. I want you to highlight that phrase, availeth much. What avails much? The fervent prayer of a righteous man. The fervent prayer of a righteous man. The fervent prayer of a righteous man. Look at the life of the man whom they are going to explain. Or James is going to talk about. You mean to say he didn't have a problem in the world? No, he was a man who also was on the run. There was a time he feared for his life. But then when he prayed with fervency, something happened. That's what the Bible is trying to show us. They were very ordinary men. Ordinary problems sometimes troubled them. But when they were intense about something, they got what they prayed. Keep reading, please. Elia and Bhavan, Nammai Pola, Padula Manishana Yirindum. மழை பெய்யாத படிக்கு கருத்தாய் ஜபம் பண்ணினான் அப்பொழுது மூன்று வருஷமும் ஆறு மாதமும் பூமியின் மேல் மழை பெய்யவில்லை த்ரீ இயர்ஸ் சிக்ஸ் மந்த்ஸ் நோ ரெயின் பிகாஸ் தர் வாஸ் ட்ரவுட் இன் த லேண்ட் நோ ஒன் மேன் பிரேட் நோ ரெயின் ஒன் மேன் பிரேட் நோ ரெயின் That means one man's intense prayer can pray rain out of a place or pray rain into a place. You don't need a whole group of people doing it. We say today we need a group. No, we don't need. We don't need. We don't need. So you're looking at me, what is pastors talking about? I'm telling you, we don't need a big group of people praying. One man's intense prayer will get the job done. Thank God if many join together. But one man is good enough. Three years, six months, no rain. Because of one man's intense prayer. Fervent prayer. Then, Marubidiyum, Jabam Paninam, Apparudu Vanam, Madayai Purindadhe, Bhoomi Than Palanai, Thandadhe. He prayed again. The rains came forth and the earth yielded its fruit. Again the same man is identified. One man prayed the rain out. Then another man had to come in to pray the rain in. No. The same man who prayed the rain out prayed the rain in. Now look at your life. What do you want to pray out and what do you want to pray in is the question. You do it. 
Don't look for sister so and so to join me prayer partner. You're wasting your time. Because sister so and so may not agree fully with what you're saying. Forgive me for being little sharp this evening. I am a sharp man. You better get used to your pastor. I know when you come sometimes with a need and you sit and say, Sister so and so, please pray for me. That sister so and so may never agree with what you're saying. For the sake of agreeing, she'll simply say, Yes, yes, I'll agree. Our brother so and so. I'm telling you. My brother so and so has never got a promotion for eight years, and you're looking at him and saying, Please pray. Next week is my promotion day. Just last eight months back, I got my other promotion. Now I'm asking for another promotion. Please pray. You mean to say he's going to pray? He's going to be wishing in his heart, What on earth is this fellow talking about? Eight years, I didn't get promoted. This fellow, in eight months, he wants promotion. Brother, let's wise enough. Don't fool yourself. Can I have an amen? Don't fool yourself. There's nobody who wishes your prosperity more than God Himself. There's nobody who loves you more than God Himself. In the world, you'll have great letdowns. But with God, you will never have a letdown. He says, you come before me, you stand with me, you pray to me, I'll answer you. I'll answer you. What do you want prayed out? Tell me. It'll go out. What do you want prayed in? You tell me, you'll get it. Is it hard for us to relate to? Or is it too simplistic the way I put it? But that's what this verse is all about. One man prayed, the rains left for three years, six months. Then he decided, no, let's have the rains once again. He prayed again and the rains came. Listen, I'm not trying to sow division among the brethren, but I want you to understand one thing. Nobody wishes your prosperity more than God. Get that right. Nobody wishes you to have the best in life more than him. So when he says, come to me, why do you go to sister so and so? You better go to him. Go, go to him. Stand with him. Ask him. Find out from him. Get to know what he has on his heart for you. And say, God, I'm going to synchronize my plan and purpose with your plan and purpose. Because yours is far better than mine. Your wisdom is far better than mine. I want yours plan to be wrought in my life. And I'm going to be fervent about it. I'm going to be intense about it. Go for it. It's a prayer not of long duration, but it's a prayer of steady application of what we want. Remember, if you read about how Elijah prayed, he put his head between his knees, bowed himself down on the ground. When he said to his servant, go and see whether the clouds have come. He went and came because he never prayed. He never prayed the rain out. <laughs> he said nothing. He said, go again seven times. Are you willing to go seven times before the Lord is a question? Some will go one time. The next time they are sitting and threatening God. God, if you don't do, see what I'll do. If you don't do, I'll do this. No, 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 you don't threaten God. You better humble yourself in the sight of God. I've seen people, they sometimes will threaten me thinking I'm God. <laughs> They'll come and threaten me. See, if you don't do, I'm going to drink. You better go and drink. What do you want me to do? Fall down and defeat and say, don't drink. I'm not God. I didn't save you. I didn't wash you in my blood. You are answerable to him. You will someday stand before him, not before Pastor Isaac. They threatened me thinking, he's the representative of God, so let's threaten him. He's the only visible thing, person we can see. So let's threaten him. You don't threaten me. And I'll tell you, oh, the, the worst person to threaten is me. At least God, maybe he'll, in his mercy, talk, talk, you, talk some sense into you. Me, I'll tell you, go to hell if you want to go to hell. Now, 
Don't threaten. Humble yourself. The Bible says when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, He lifts us up. He lifts us up. Seven times, go see. Finally comes and says, I see something. It's like the hand of a man. He doesn't say, go see the eighth thing. He says, go and tell Ahab, get down fast. The rain will stop you otherwise. It's amazing. It will make your hand really stand. Why? Because it's talking about fervency in prayer. உடனடியாகிறங்கி <laughs> அரண்மனைக்கு போ இல்லாவிட்டால் மழை உங்களை நிறுத்தும் என்று சொல் என்று சொல்லி அனுப்புகிறதை நாம் பார்க்கிறோம் You and I will pray for rain. I'll tell you, no rain would have come that day. Send the man who is not prayerful out while you bend your knees before the Lord. Can I have an amen please? Don't sit and make useless people your prayer partners. Don't make useless people your prayer partners. They are not worth it. You won't see the miracle happen. It's not because God doesn't want to give. Get the prayer partner out. He will give you the miracle. Some have more faith in the prayer partner than in God's answer to their prayers. Stop your nonsense. Grow up in Christ. Come before God. Spend time with Him. Get the way God wants to give you a miracle happen. The way He says it will happen. What does he say here? Did he say find a prayer partner? No, he said the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and says Elijah was a man like us. Don't look at him as prophet Elijah. Look at him as a man like us. Same passions, same problems, same trials, same temptations, same having to cast down imaginations, same things that you and I face. He faced, but the man did something. He prayed fervently. God answered prayer. Nammai pol, Oru padulla manishan aga van irindhalum, Ukkham aga jabitaan, Kattar and the jabatai kettu badil kodutta. I told you I'll give you an example before I close this evening. It's not an example from the Bible, but it's an example that I read about many many years ago. In the life of the other world Roberts and what happened in his ministry. There was this time when his assistant, Bob D. Weiss, who was his crusade coordinator, a man of God, very mightily used of God in the ministry, along with Brother Oral Roberts, fell sick, seriously sick. He had a heart condition and they said he wouldn't make it. So Brother Oral Roberts went to meet with him and he spoke to him and Brother Bob Dewey was lying on bed and he looked at him and said, you know, Oral, all of our people at one age die. We all live by 60, 65. So Oral Roberts was listening to him. He said, well, if it is hereditary, what do you do? And uh, he said, all in my father's line, they die early. So Brother Roberts joined with him. He said, okay, let's just pray. He prayed a prayer and he left the room. As he left the room, Bob DeWeese's granddaughter was listening to the prayer. Thank God for granddaughters who are spiritually sensitive. She came out of the room and grabbed his hand and pulled him and said, I didn't hear you pray a tenth prayer. 
I didn't hear you pray a tent prayer. What she meant was, she had been in all the miracle crusades. She had seen the intensity in Oral Roberts' prayer in crusade meetings. She said, I didn't hear that prayer this evening. You just prayed for the sake of praying. Go back and pray a tent prayer. He said he was stunned for a minute. Then he walked into the room. He said, Bob, how old was your dad when he passed? He said, about 60, 65. How old was your grandfather? 60, 65. How old are you? He said, about 65. He said, what about your mother's side? He said, my mother's side, everybody lived long. 85, 90, 98. He said, we'll go with your mother's side. <laughs> we'll go with your mother's side. We'll believe. Not the father's side will prevail. The mother's side will prevail. And he prayed a prayer and the man lived and had many, many years of fruitful ministry. Today he's gone to be with the Lord. But thank God for 10 prayers. Can I have an amen? Thank God for intensity in prayer. You can't pray a casual prayer. You got to know what you're praying. You got to know what you're praying. Because when you know what you're praying and you pray, you will see God hear and answer. God never answers casual prayers. He becomes casual then. Because you prayed a casual prayer, he is casual also. So the prayer goes unanswered. So casually he heard your casual prayer. How do you like that? It disturbs us when we hear the preacher say it. But that's what's happening in most people's lives. Casually they are asking God for things. Even when they stand to give testimony, they make tes the testimony. Casually I asked. No. You ask with intensity. You mean business before God. Remember what God spoke about the people at Babel. He said once they have decided that they want to build a tower, nothing can stop them. Amen. Whose testimony? Testimony of Jehovah. God Almighty, the living God, the creator of everything. He is testifying about man's ability to get things done. Once he decides, that's it, he'll get it. So I have to do something else. I have to decide something else. If I don't decide something else, they'll build a tower. So, I have to do something else. I have to divide their tongues. Tower of Babel, towers were divided. Day of Pentecost, tower, tongues were united. Now you see how much power you have. You have a lot of power, much more than you realize. Come back to God with intensity. Pray the prayers that God honors and respects every time you pray. Let's bow our heads in prayer please as we stand up.